Greetings from Tax Transport. I'm really excited to bring you the start of a new series titled Tax Tips. Our ultimate goal is to upload a video weekly, which will provide further resources for our clientele. Today's topic is principal residence. Hello, and welcome to Tax Tip Tuesdays. We are going to be going over the principal residence exception today. But first, I'd like you to meet Bob. Bob is a Canadian resident who has a few questions about selling his principal residence but he doesn't exactly know if he should report the sale of this residence. If he does report it, how much tax is he going to be paying? Will there be any capital gains? And what will be the effect on the T1? Please keep in mind, for the purpose of this video, we will be only discussing the principal residence exemption for regular individuals, that is, people who file a T1 general. The principal residence exemption for trusts are a slightly different matter, but we'll be discussing these in a slightly different video. For now, it's T1 General. Back in October 3rd, 2016, the CRA made a few amends to the Income Tax Act that everyone who is currently selling their house should be aware of. Now, let's go over the two most important changes. The first change of the amendment made sure that the principal residence exemption can now only be claimed and applies to Canadian residents. Foreigners are no longer able to claim this exemption. The principal residence exemption for foreigners calculation no longer includes the plus one. However, this calculation has still remained the same for Canadian residents. Let's go over the second change now. The second change is that the sale of the principal residence must be, by law, recorded on the T1 general. However, the proceeds of disposition can be recorded on a special form known as the Schedule Three Principal Residence. It is very important for all taxpayers to know that failure to disclose the sale of a principal residence will result in a fine, the lesser of $8,000 or $100 per month since the designated sale was not recorded. Now, here's a demo for the sale of principal residence using our very own software, Taxtron. Hello, and welcome to Taxtron Tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be going over how to properly record principal residence sale in our 2016 software. But first, let's do a quick example to show a run-through of the software. So, in 2007, Mr. Smith bought his house for $200,000. To pay off his mortgage from 2007 to 2009, Mr. Smith rented this house to some students. In 2010, Mr. Smith stopped renting his house to students and lived in it by himself. In 2016, he disposed of the property for $500,000. What is the process of recording a sale? So first of all, there's a gain of $300,000. Secondly, Mr. Smith can designate the property as his principal residence for the years between 2010 to 2016, when he wasn't renting to students. From 2007 to 2009, because he was earning investment income, aka the rental income from students, he will not be able to include this as part of the calculation. So, without any further ado, let's enter some information into the software. The first form of interest is the Schedule 3 principle. We can access this form by typing in S3 into the Forms Manager and selecting S3 principle. Now, there are three check mark, mark boxes of significance up at the top of the screen. The first check mark box is applicable to those who have lived in their house and for all years owned, described it, and designated it as a principal residence. The second check box is specific to this example. Out of three of the years owned, they were three of the years owned were being used as a rental income. The other seven were being used as a principal residence. The third checkmark box is similar to the second, except it is for multiple properties or multiple rental properties. Let's go ahead and checkmark the second box. Let's fill out the appropriate street and address information. Now, his year of acquisition was 2007. His year of disposition was 2016. And his proceeds, exactly half a million dollars. Now, the second form we have to bring up is a T2091. Now, there are two T2091s in the form manager. The one of interest is the T2091 principle. The other form is the T2091IND. Now, 
This is a very specific form, and it should only be filled out if you have filed a 2T664 way back in 1994. If you have never heard of a T664 or remember filing one back in 1994, then you would leave this form blank. In this case, we can remove it. Now, the T2091. We would want to fill out the number of years in which the property was designated as a principal residence, residence. In this case, from 2010 to 2016, seven years. We want to also include the proceeds of disposition and the adjusted cost base, $200,000. Again, there are some parts of the t this form that, which you don't have to complete unless it applies to you. This part in particular, Again, if you don't have a Form T664 and you haven't filed it along with your 1994 tax return, you can leave these columns and boxes blank. If we scroll down to the bottom, we will be able to see our taxable capital gain. There we go. Parts 3 and 4. Total capital gain, $60,000. In order to see the taxable portion of this, we can go into the Forms Manager and type down S3 for the Schedule 3 summary. Again, if we scroll down to the bottom, we'll be able to see the total taxable capital gains. Now remember, capital gains are taxed at a rate of 50%. So the amount should appropriately be $30,000, shown here. Finally, in order to review all the information, we can view it on the T1 General. If we go to View, T1 General. As we see in line 127, we can see taxable capital gains of $30,000. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe and leave suggestions down below for future videos.